one of my biggest clients that I'm working with, he built, uh, scaled and sold a company that's worth a two, they did $2 billion in 2019. But his personal self, he's not great at finances. He actually sucks at finances. He spends all his money. Um, I think when he sold the company, he made $30 million himself. Like that's what he took home from the cell with all his business partners, X, Y, Z. Um, but he took home 30 million and he ran through that in the last uh, 15 years, gone. Welcome to Sunny Setup Podcast. How's it going, Michael? I'm doing fantastic. How's your day going? Going good. So how did you become a coach and more specifically a habit coach? Yeah, absolutely. So just so people know a little bit of background, why a habit coach, uh, where I come from as a child and stuff, I was never exposed to any entrepreneurship, um, any books, any business backgrounds, anything like that. So whenever I was pursuing entrepreneurship, I didn't know entrepreneur was a word. And whenever I was doing entrepreneurship, I was, I've always been a hustler, right? So I've hustled, grind, like, you know, all of us entrepreneurs, we have that similarity of, we just want to get out there and grind and do our own thing. But then I started to realize I'm like, okay, well, I'm working my ass off, you know, 80 hours a week and I'm still kind of not making, I'm hitting this ceiling. And as I'm hitting this ceiling, let's say that ceiling for you is $10,000 a month. And I'm trying to figure out what is it? in my life that's stopping me from hitting this, you know, breaking this ceiling of $10,000 a month. So I would dive deep into, you know, some content, some entrepreneurs, people that make a hundred million dollars a year, got billion dollar companies. And I'd see what are they doing differently? And as I started to study, I've been studying now, um, personal development. I've been studying habits for about a decade now. And ever since I've been starting, uh, studying these habits and these, um, successful people, I start to realize that, even though everybody's journey is different in every, everywhere, everybody ends up with, you know, the almost the same outcome that their vision is, whether it be a million dollar business, a billion dollar business, whatever it is, they have this goal and they all somehow go from where they were not knowing anything and getting to this, you know, end outcome. So I started realizing, oh, there's some similarities and we've heard the quote, you know, success leaves clues. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to dive into this, this quote, success leaves clues. What are the clues? And as I started studying them, I realized, you know, gratitude, writing down your goals, writing down your quarterly goals, if it down to the day, what are your five most critical tasks that you need to get done every single day? A lot of us, we have 20, 30, 40 things that we need to get done every single day, but it's like, that's going to be, that's going to overwhelm you. And if you don't accomplish those 20, 30 things, you feel like you've lost a day or you weren't productive enough. And when you do that, you start, you know, set your negative self-talk starts coming in like, man, you didn't win the day. You're not getting stuff done. You're not being productive. And it's a lot of this negative self-talk. So what I've realized that high successful people do is, yeah, they all got 20, 30, 40, 50 things to do, but they only pick like the most important three to five things that must get done today. Most critical tasks. And then by doing that, if they finish those by 10 a.m., everything else is just a bonus. If they go do other tasks or they could take the day off, you know, whatever it is. And then rewiring your mind for success. So it, that comes with goals and that comes with affirmations. Now, a lot of people in early entrepreneurship, they say oh, affirmations is like, why am I going to sit there and write down, you know, I am great. I am, you know, whatever. I have an abundance of money. And it sounds to, from the outside in, it sounds like, why would I do that? Nonsense. But if you do it, I, I've done it for 10 years now. And what you're doing is you're actually causing your cells to rewire. And when you're rewiring your cells on a, on a neurological level, then it's impossible. Like it's impossible for me right now to really think negative. It's impossible for me to really get sick. I don't get sick. I haven't been sick. I've been sick twice in the last decade. Um, and success now comes to me in the most effortless way possible because I've rewired my mind to focus on the relationships that I need to build. So what got me in to be a habit coach is, is the being exposed to this information. I come from a background of like drugs, guns, violence, section eight housing, um, all that. So whenever I was exposed to this and I, it worked for me, 
I was like, man, this is, this is what I got to go teach. You know, everybody that was in my community, this is what I got to go teach the world because this is going to change their life. And you and I know, you know, uh, David in entrepreneurship, there's only like top 5% of the people in the world are actually getting shit done, but everybody else is stuck and they don't know why they're stuck. So that's what made me become a habit coach and, you know, CEOs, teams, executives, entrepreneurs, that's what they come to me for to, to help them master their thought habits. So that way they can now increase their profits in their life every single month. Wow. That's uh, very interesting. So you said something that I think about a lot and that's uh, like studying the habits of people. And mm -hmm. I, I encourage everybody to have a role model of some sort, at least one. My favorite role model in history is Marcus Aurelius, which is the thought of the godfather of the Stoic philosophy. And every day I'm trying to think, how can I mimic him in my life? Yeah. And, you know, you think, what are what is one key trait that at least most successful people have, whether it be in business or life? And that's being, that's having a sense of stoicism about themselves. Like they're not letting themselves get overly emotional about everything. They're, they're just, they're very focused, they're calm, they're calculated. And that's, I, that's something that I really try to, I, I think about in every situation that I go into. I had a previous boss that was in the military and he said, I always respected him. He said, I took traits from officers that I liked and the officers that I didn't like, I said, okay, I'm not going to be like that. And so he's just, soaking in all this information from people he's met to build himself into the best person that he wants to be. And I, that just, I think it's so important to, to just build yourself a good foundation. And I've talked about this on my channel before is don't overlook the small things. And like yes. you were saying with the daily affirmations, you think, Oh, well, why would I take time to tell myself that I'm great? But it's those little things that you do on a daily basis to build the foundation that, yeah, you may, you may not think in the current moment, Oh, this is going to help me make my millions, but it's that little piece of the puzzle, right? Like it's every, everything that you do in your life is like a, um, how does it, a cascade of, you know, for, for further, further events. And so, like you said, doing those little things for yourself, they may not seem significant right now, but building those good habits. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that I, I didn't think about until you said it, but it makes sense. Yeah. You know, just telling yourself, yeah, I'm going to do this instead of, Oh, I didn't do enough, which is <laughs> something that since I started working on business, I struggle with of not feeling like I'm doing enough, but you just got to change your mentality to, be in the, the mindset of you're making progress, not I'm not doing enough. Yep. Does that make yep. sense? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We gotta, you gotta just continue to always positive self-talk. And the more you do that, like I said, you're just gonna, you're gonna actually change the way your cells reproduce. And that's what, you know, being a habit coach, it's not just about habits, but I dive into the science of the habits. I dive into the neuroscience of habits. And when you go that super, super deep, you could see how much it's saying like, ah, oh, this sucks. How much that one phrase will affect the rest of your entire life. Like it's not just saying it once, but people say this over and over and over again. And that one phrase could affect the rest of your life. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd be, be very specific on, you know, the words I say. And if you're in my circle, I check you on your words. A lot of people, when, when they think something fu is funny, they go, ha ha, I'm weak. I say, no, you're strong. You know, and there's, there's things that you got to get out of your vocabulary because it's so common. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. So how did you, how did you become a habit coach? Is that something that when I was listening to your podcast and learning about you, I was very interested to, to find this out is because I, I know I myself have habits that I don't like, just like everybody else does. And I'm wondering how you, how you became the person that you are which is a habit coach. Yeah. One, I'll tell you, uh, you just said something specific that I'll tell you right now is it took me a decade of working on myself before I could go 
any service or product or anything you have, if you know you, you're really great and you got confidence in yourself to go deliver a product or a service to somebody is if you solved that problem for yourself. So I, I, uh, easiest example could be like a website designer or the most common one we hear is fitness, right? So I'll take the most common one as fitness. If you have a fit physique, and you look good and you're shredded and you're healthy and everything you've solved that problem for yourself therefore it's easier for you to go out there and solve someone else's problem and help somebody lose 100 pounds get more fit and eat more healthier so for myself i've solved that problem for myself and when i realized that was the problem i solved for myself my background that i said at the beginning of you know these drugs guns violence i was an angry kid if, if you met me just i don't know sophomore year of high school and you met me today you would you would not see a different i mean you would see two completely different people um from what i was so one it took me a decade to become who i am first then for me to go out there and say you know what i need to help other people in this situation in entrepreneurship, you ask almost any entrepreneur what their number one goal that they're going to do when they get make a lot of money is probably buy their mom a new car, buy their mom a house, you know. And so it all comes back to the root cause is we all want to take care of our family first. So I was like, okay, well, how can I instill this in my family without pushing them into it? Because a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we'll go take our dreams and aspirations to our families. And then our families will say, ah, you're crazy. That's not going to work and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go impact other people's lives, people that are willing. I work with the willing, not the needy. And I try to see, you know, who I can help in specific ways, help them and then produce content around it. So my family watches my content and now it's, it's building up my family. So me, my, for my inner self and why I selfishly do what I do is because long term I want to make an impact on my family. Now, I also love entrepreneurship and I love business. Business is second nature to me. That's a, that's a, a gift that was given to me. So, one of my biggest clients that I'm working with, he built, uh, scaled, and sold a company that's worth a two. They did two billion dollars in 2019. But his personal self, he's not great at finances. He actually sucks at finances. He spends all his money. Um, I think when he sold the company, he made $30 million himself. Like that's what he took home from the cell with all his business partners, X, Y, Z. Um, but he took home 30 million and he ran through that in the last uh, 15 years, gone. All that money's gone. And so when we're discussing what's the habits behind that, I'm like, I want to surround myself with these people. So in entrepreneurship, we want to, you know, you're the, some of the five people you surround yourself with. Well, yeah, I want to hang out with this person that sold a billion dollar company, built a billion dollar brand. But I also realized, why would he want to hang out with me? You know, so how can I be a value to these people as well? Is like, man, I I found out I find people's uh, patterns, and you can you can find somebody's patterns right away. Um, there's a Greg Reed said it to me. He said there's a C a P C P C. So there's a clue. And when you see a clue, like if you're going on a date with a girl and she's 20 minutes late, well, that's a clue, right? Now, if you decide to invite her on a date multiple times and she's late every time. So now you got to start telling her, you know, so now that's a pattern. So there's a clue and then there's a pattern. Then the other one is C is the last one is a choice. So now you have a choice. Are you going to invite her to dinner and say, hey, dinner's at six o'clock knowing that it's at seven knowing she's going to be 20 minutes late do you go pick her up early or do you just stop dating this girl right so there's cpc there's a clue there's patterns and there's choices that's how i build my relationships is i see everybody's clues and then i see is there a pattern there and then i make a choice do i really want to be friends with this person can i help this person or do i just leave this person alone and if I see an entrepreneur, I know I could really help. I'll invite them into my circle. I'm, I'm equal to everybody. So how I became a habit coach is one, a lot of people, they will start telling you what you're good at. 
when people around you start telling you what you're good at, then you, you, you'll start to, and you could take that serious. When I recognize people's clues and patterns and I help them shift their mindset, I, people started telling me like, dude, you're really good at that. You're really good at that. And then I started making it a career for myself to go and do that for people. That's a, an interesting way to think about it. And I, of course, any kind of a coach is there to help. And so I, I definitely see that, that, uh, personality trait, but that's, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting way to think about it. And I thank you for sharing that, it's, you know, that more personal side. I, mm -hmm. I like that. It's so like when you're, when you're helping these people, what do you see? Like, what are the common struggling points that you see with multiple people? So the way we think there's a, there's a book out there. Check this out. We all have heard the book think and grow rich, right? Well, mm -hmm. inside of the book, it says there are, the answer is on every page. It says the answer is in every chapter. The answer is in the book. But when you recognize what the answer is, then you're already halfway there. And I've read this book, I'm 3000, about 3000 hours in on audio with, with thinking grow rich. Um, and I, st I've been studying that book for probably about six years now coming up on a decade. And I had a realization last year and I was doing everything and I had all the answers and I was committing on all the answers subconsciously, but I didn't realize that whole book is in the title. It's think, right? So when I became, became a habit coach, I didn't just become a habit coach to find out your habits. I came a ha became a habit coach to find out your thought habits. What are your thought habits? And the most common thing with anybody and everybody, even myself to this day, you know, I'm not perfect. I still got thought habits that are, that need fixed, right? Is a belief system. So it's, it simply comes down to the belief system and the thought habits that you give yourself. What we think is more powerful than even what we speak. Um, so it's just your belief around everything because who do we talk to the most? We talk to ourselves the most, you know, and, and when I tell you to right now in your head, shout the word money in your head and you can hear yourself shout the word money, right? But there's no mm -hmm. sound. There's no sound. That's how powerful thoughts is, is I can shout money and I can get, I hear the voice in my head, but that's how powerful our thoughts are is it's a real voice and we're talking to ourselves all the time. So I really dive deep on what is that thought pattern, the clues and what are, you know, the, the patterns I really dive into what's the thought patterns that everybody has, but it all comes down to their thoughts. You know, at, at the end of the day, you can solve all your problems with your thoughts. Now, I, I do tell people, David, I, I tell people that if you're going to fix a habit, you also don't want to fix 30 habits at the same time because you'll, you'll fix none of them. But if you just focused on fixing, getting rid of one bad habit every month and replacing it with a good habit for five years, you will have 60 new habits. You'll be a completely, totally new person, but you'll have 60 brand new habits that are subconscious, by the way, subconscious habits. So when you do that, then you're going to perform at a different level. Hmm. That's, I'll have to think about that because that's, that's a, yeah, definitely a, a deep, deep topic to, uh, to talk about. So like when, when you're helping these people, what, what are you thinking about and how does helping these people affect you? The, I'm going to answer that second question part, which is, um, uh, how does it affect me? And this mm -hmm. is anybody in the world is we feel our best, like our body, our spirit feels the absolute best. We get the most joy when we're giving. And if you look back to all the times that you've give, given somebody willingly and given somebody with gratitude, like you are really happy, right? If there's somebody, a homeless person and you actually give them a dollar or if somebody needs help moving, your buddy needs help moving furniture and you actually go give your time to help them move, you actually feel good in the moment. You might not realize it consciously, but subconsciously in, in, in your body, you feel really good. So how does it benefit me? I, feel, I get joy whenever I see people get results and change their life. I come from a background where I wasn't exposed to this. So I come from a background where 
if you, you know, make it past 21 to 25 years old, you're, you've done made it in the town, you know? So to be able to go back and help these people actually rewire their mind, let them know that they actually have something out there for them. That's where I get joy from. Um, now the first question, I uh, totally skipped over the first question though, cause that second question was important, but, uh, what was the first question you asked on that one? Can't remember. Okay, we'll, 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 get, we'll get back to it. So no worries. <laughs> when when you were saying you feel good about your like your your emotions when you're helping, mm -hmm. I had one of my friends on the show a couple. Uh, it was probably about two months ago, and he was saying the exact same type of thing. He said helping is one of the most selfish things that you can do because of that. It's like because you feel so good about yourself, it almost feels like a it almost feels like you're giving or you're receiving more than you're giving because yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Like when I, I mean, there's a couple times for myself when I feel really good. And that's one, when I'm in the gym and I hit a brand new PR because I'm a gym yep. freak. And two, when I'm helping somebody with something. Now I, I've, I've had many conversations with friends, helping them with their problems. And I, that's like a high for me. I mean, I, I, nothing quite gives you that feeling of pleasure, like help knowing that you genuinely helped somebody that is close to you. Like that's, that's, it's just an indescribable feeling. And I know, you know, the same feeling because yeah. that's what you do. You help people. And so, although I'm not a habit coach, I know the same type of feeling that you get when you help people. And that's just a, it's almost bliss, at least for me. I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's the same way for you, but it's, you feel like you're on a cloud. Is that the same for you? Yeah. And it goes for everybody. I mean, if you're a web designer and you build a badass website for somebody and they're happy and you can see the joy in your client's, you know, face, then same, same thing, you know, yeah, as long as you're willing to give, but it's also a trap. Sometimes some people, they feel like they're always so giving that they block themselves out from receiving. And one thing I've always, I, I will always say yes to a gift. Always, always, always. Because I know I give so much and I used to block out gifts. Like for, for example, let's say I helped a buddy move, right? And that same buddy pulls out a hundred dollar bill and tries to give you a hundred dollar bill. The first reaction we say is like, ah, oh, no, 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 it's okay. You know, of course I'm, I'm gonna take care of it. That's you're blocking yourself out from receiving. And when you do that, that's, that's an energy that's going to keep blocking you out from opportunity down the road. So if you willingly help and you're going to help your buddy move for free anyway, and then he comes out and he says, yo, here's a hundred bucks. I appreciate it. You take it and you say, ah, oh, thank you. You know, appreciate it. And you accept it. But most of us will block off ourselves from receiving. And that's the only way to keep giving is to keep receiving as well. So and then a lot of us will eventually get into that leads into a depressed state, you know, because we do give so much and then we block ourselves out, out from receiving so much that eventually we're like, man, no one's giving It's because they're recognizing that you don't, you don't receive well. And mm -hmm. so stop wanting to give you stuff because you're always rejecting their gifts. That's yeah. Good thought. Definitely. <laughs> So I want to thank you for coming on. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate it. You know, enjoyed the conversation and, um, you know, shoot it, shoot this over to me, any, any content you share and, you know, we'll make sure we get it out to our audience as well. hundred percent.